Okay, hi guys. Uh, we're back with, uh, I guess, part two of this microphone buying setting up series. Uh, I want to talk about other things besides just the microphone. I want to talk about what else you need to consider when you're going to be recording your spoken word. When you're doing those kinds of, I call it spoken word recordings, you uh, there are a number of things that I alluded to in the last video that you need to think about. So we're going to go through some of those really quickly so that you you kind of get your brain going on that. One of the, one of the most important things is where you're actually recording. I call it the vocal booth. A vocal booth is kind of like a glorified phone booth that you actually walk into and it's got all that sound deadening material that absorbs all whatever doesn't go in the mic doesn't come back. Right now I'm sitting in my office. I have bare walls that are very reflective of sound. Uh, there's a window, there's, there's hardwood floors. There's nothing to absorb the sound except for actually my clothes. So the thing about that is that this is not a good environment. I can, I can do the recording here, but I would want to put like blankets or towels or something on the walls, sorry about that, to actually deaden the sound and it makes a big difference in how in the quality of what um, what you're going to record so you you want to consider that the other thing that you want to do is stop and just listen can you hear the traffic outside close the window or find a place that you can't hear the traffic outside find what's ticking in the background is there a clock on the wall going tick tock is there air conditioning uh, or some sort of a heater or some sort of a fan or something? You're hearing white noise. You know, my my the washroom is right across the hall if the door is open and the bathroom fan happens to be on. I can totally hear that. We don't want the microphone to pick up anything else except for what you want the user to hear because it is very distracting. If the user can hear something ticking or maybe they have better ears than you or something and they're hearing something that that you don't want them to listen to. It can be very distracting. It totally takes away from what you're doing. So we want to get that right. The other thing I want to talk about is uh, the software that you're going to use to record. When you're recording, there's a lot of free stuff out there that you can use on your computer. If you have a MacBook or a Mac PC, chances are very good you have GarageBand. Excellent for doing this. Uh, if you have a PC, you can use something like Audacity. There's a lot of stuff out there that's been around for a while. New, old, if it works, it works. So um, just check it out and chances are very good you'll be able to do the editing and, and such as well. The other thing that really, really matters is your playback system or systems. This should You should listen to your test. Make it Make a test recording of yourself. And, and set it up exactly the way you think it should be and do the recording and then listen back on your Mac, listen back on your laptop, listen back on your big speakers, listen back on your stereo, listen back in your car, listen back on your earbuds. All these different playback systems will give you a different sound. So that's something to consider. Play it back on a number of things so that it sounds, sounds equally good on big speakers and little speakers. Enough said about that. I want to talk about during the recording. When you're when you're re actually doing your recording, um, you want to main, maintain a consistent distance between you and the microphone, and don't turn around and talk over here and get back and oh you wouldn't believe this thing blah blah blah, blah and back and forth. When you do that, you you create. You can totally tell that you're closer and farther away from the microphone. That is also very distracting and of course not very professional. You're not going to get a good recording. This is not live TV or something where your people can even see your hands waving around anyways. Uh, I want to talk about what to do if you make a mistake. All right, so now you're reading your manuscript or your book and you're going through the pages and uh, when you get to, a, you make a mistake. It happens sometimes. There's a number of things you should and should not do. When you make a mistake, it's going to happen. Get get ready for it. Surprise, it, it happens. Don't stop the recording. Don't beat yourself up about it. 
what you do is you stop and you leave yourself a, 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 a few seconds of silence of nothing and then you go back and you start again now where you start is either the beginning of the sentence that you just messed up or maybe back at the beginning of the paragraph you go back to a logical place where there would be sort of a normal pause between sentences between paragraphs anyways once you do that so that you don't interrupt the flow if you if you turn off the recording you may have that you may come in at a slightly different volume or slightly different pace or slightly different energy or something changes and it gets picked up. It gets noticed. And it sounds like you, you did a cut and paste job. But if you do this properly, here's what it, what it seems like. So I'm reading my manuscript. And then she said, he said. And then he said, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. And then you keep going right so you've got that same momentum the same speed the same volume the same everything's the same as you were just doing you just caught yourself oh i made a mistake and then you fixed it so when when you're finished the recording and you go back to your audio recording you're going to see the pattern of your voice and and what you're going to see is this this sort of blank area where you left the pause so this is me saying the I, I said she instead of he and then I fixed it and then I went back and I I did it again I started back at the beginning of that particular sentence like I say wherever it makes sense and then you're gonna be able to edit out all your mistakes later so just get through the chapter or get through the major pages or whatever part of the book you're in try to keep it as, as consistent as possible during your recording Okay, so now I want to talk about um, the actual editing. Now you've got your recording, you've created, and you you want to edit it. We just talked about what, when, when you're making a mistake. What you're going to do is how to cut that out or how to edit that down. I, I, there's no way I can teach you all that stuff now. But the software that you used to record yourself is probably the same software that you're going to be able to use to edit yourself. So we talked about Audacity, we talked about GarageBand, there's GoldWave, there's a bunch of other ones that, that are available. They're all free, they're out there. Find them, use them, they're awesome, right? What you're doing is you're editing it down to a, the pristine final version of your each chapter, and then you're gonna create, if it doesn't already save it that way, you're gonna create an MP3. So that the ultimate goal is to create an MP3 file because that's the most obvious. There's other versions, there's WAV files, there's all kinds of audio files. The, the version that you want that's most acceptable by most people is, is the MP3. So that's what you're, what you're really doing. And then when you've got your test, I told you to create a test. Don't record the whole chapter. Uh, just create five minutes of test. Maybe the first 10 pages or something. Not even that much. You don't even need that much. You're going to get it really quickly. Just create a test that you can have friends that will be honest with you. And 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 test for yourself on different audio playbacks, but also have them check it out for you. Because they will give you the feedback that you're you're reading it too slowly or you're reading it too fast or I can't understand what you're saying or the quality sounds great. Like whatever their feedback is, try to get as some feedback so that you can tweak your and practice and so on and so forth tweak your recording once you figure that out you're golden then you'll be able to record your whole book or your whole manuscript or whatever whatever it is you're reading and it'll be fabulous alrighty so there you have it there's quite a bit here for you to think about and and I mean there's so much more that goes into the recording and editing and everything else that I talked about, but these are all the major topics, the high level 10,000 foot view of what you want to consider and what you want to think about when you're going to do that kind of a professional recording. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to listen, to watch, and we'll see you around. Bye now.